Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled. I am Peter, that is Tara, and we are going to talk about Our Boys, Season 1, Episode 2. It is called I Love Toto. And I'm not going to lie, there's a temptation to break out into Africa uh, right after <laughs> I say that. Because uh, it's what the first thing I thought when I saw the name Toto. But, uh, full spoilers for the episode, of course. Uh, this aired right after the first one. We, we haven't gotten to it until the weekend. Uh, episode 3 is airing on Monday. We'll have that up sometime Tuesday night. I think late mm -hmm. Tuesday, probably. Um, so this is episode two, and I can actually understand why they aired these back to back in a lot of ways because one of the things that I said about episode one when we talked about it earlier in the week is that I liked it a lot, and there's a lot of potential in it, but it did feel a little bit impersonal for a lot of the episode. This episode mm -hmm. gives me all the personal. All of it is personal, almost entirely. And oh yeah, I get it. I get it. Um, yeah, episode one was definitely the the prologue. The, this is what you need to know. Yeah, yeah. Episode two is the actual emotion and like actually caring about uh, what someone is going through uh, in a more personal way. And uh, obviously, we ended episode one with Muhammad seemingly being taken. He disappeared from the street, and we pick up with with uh, Hussein, his father, out in the street, handheld camera up close and personal, looking just over his shoulder as he looks around the street. Um, mm -hmm. and it's not all one take and it's not even entirely in real time there are cuts occasionally especially as the scene goes on because this, this is like a whole big 10 minute plus scene that takes place before we even get to the title screen and but it has the feeling of being very kind of urgent and almost real time it's not really real mm -hmm. time but it's close to it where it feels like everything's just happening continuously and it's the 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 initial like sort of fear of like has he disappeared what's happening you know the mum's on the phone try to call him and he's just getting voicemail over and over again and he's going down the street to look for him he maybe sees his friend um he sees some neighbors who say oh we, you know we heard someone got taken um you know out by your store and he knows wait my son was there like you know and he puts it in and then he phones the police and then we get, and it's not that's not what the scene ends the, you know the police come he interacts mm -hmm. with more people he interacts with the police they watch security footage like this all takes place in the first 10 or so minutes and it's all one big scene that almost more or less continuously plays out um and obviously the handheld makes it feel almost documentary like it makes you feel like it's very intimate and you're with him the entire time and you feel with him and yeah that's opening 10 minutes um i think hooked me on the show I mean, I liked the first episode, but this opening 10 minutes hooked me on the show more than episode one did on its own. Me too. And it really shows you how great the actor is who plays Hussein. Because mm. you are, like, it's a handheld camera, yeah, but it's, like, right tight on his face, on his eyes the whole time. And you can see the worry just building up as he's starting to piece things together. Like, this, something really, truly bad has happened to my son. Yeah, and he's and hoping it's not. He's hoping, oh, he'll be back soon. Like, he's just, you know, he's away with friends or something. Um, and you know it's after he hears that someone's been taken uh, from the neighbors or whoever it is and he phones the police and he's trying to tell them this information because now he's this is the moment of like shit this is actually scary like he may actually something bad may have just really happened and not knowing the story i am like not knowing where this is going like i had no idea if, is, is this a thing where he's going to be held captive for a while and maybe maybe there's a chance that will get him back or whatever of course the episode completely <laughs> like ruins that idea very quickly nope very quickly yeah. um and because because the, the point where simon later on in the episode is driving towards the you know one of the the, the key scenes where the phone might have you know last been because i've been tracking the gps as best i can and he gets a call saying hey we found the body go there instead it's presumably a teenager he's like presumably yeah i mean they can't tell it's, it's mutilated it's been mutilated <laughs> yeah. oh that word was not yeah no, that, i i also had no idea where the story was going after the first episode ended and when as soon as they said they found a body i was like oh please don't let it be Mohammed. yeah because <laughs> but of course who else would it be like <laughs> yeah because because i even thought yeah maybe it'll be like a red herring where they think it's him but then they eventually prove it's not and there's a lot of moments in the episode where they're going through like details like what was he wearing yeah uh, and clearly his clothes had been burned off but they could still kind of tell what his underwear was so there's a whole scene where they're asking like do you know what underwear he was wearing and yeah and I mean, even the parents won't usually know that because no one necessarily stays in the room when you're getting dressed. Like, it's still something that only he right, would know. Right, but it makes sense that his mother who does his yeah. laundry would probably know, or who yeah. even buys his clothes and does his laundry, would know what kind of underwear he would have. Exactly. Maybe not what he was wearing that day. Yeah, because um, cause, uh, cause the moment where, like, it, I think it's clear to Hussein that 
they know something they're not telling them is when they specifically say, is there any underwear with colour? Like, that are more colourful. And it's like, right. clearly they have a piece of information they're trying to match up. And, yeah. you know, they get to the... They're like, this is something we ask everybody. Yeah. Bullshit. Yeah, bullshit. <laughs> uh, but you get to this realisation that, oh, his brother owns underwear like that. He could have just borrowed one of his... Which, I mean, it's weird. I mean, I, I never grew up with siblings. I'm an only child, but... I, I'm not borrowing underwear from a sibling or anyone for that matter. It's underwear. Uh, yeah, I have siblings. Um, that's not something that happens. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe a cultural thing. Maybe you know something maybe. that we think's weird but isn't as weird. Um, same as same as even socks. To be honest, like socks are such a personal thing. <laughs> yeah, it could also just be like a like a poverty thing. Um, you know, because you get the impression that these, I mean, they're blue collar workers, but you get the impression that they don't really have money. They I mean, live above their shop. Yeah, but he does have his own business. So I, didn't, I mean, I don't think they're that hard up that they're struggling for yeah, underwear. Yeah, I guess that's true. You know, I never get that impression. I, mean, I think it's just a casual thing. Um, and maybe given what we find out at the end, maybe there's a reason why he wants more colorful underwear. You know, maybe it's a mm -hmm. an aesthetic choice as opposed to, oh, I'm out of underwear. <laughs> I need to steal from my brother. Uh, <laughs> true. Yeah, that's true. Um so, but if you go back to that big opening scene, because there's a lot of things I like about this uh, in details. I love that immediately there's like a mob kind of forming around them and they're getting kind of angry and the the policemen are... Who we met in the first episode. We did, yeah. Uh, they, like... And they were just as frustrating. And... <laughs> yeah, it, it, but as, as soon as this, the mob starts like getting angry and shouting for justice and saying this is unfair, oh, like, you know, it's because because we're Arab, if, you, you know, if a Jew was killed, you'd, you'd, you know, do much more than this, but you don't care. They're like... They look at each other and say, oh, we should probably just get out of here because it's getting sketchy. And I understand why they feel that way. I don't necessarily blame them for being scared because there's a mob forming and they're, 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 yeah. whether they've done anything right or wrong, they know they're going to be seen as the villains right now. And yeah. I get why they've got that uh, inclination to, to just run right now and deal with us from a distance. But still, there was a point in that scene where I really was just like, okay, you guys clearly don't care. And oh, yeah. When when he said, look, somebody in the mob said, look, there are cameras. We can get footage. Like, wouldn't a police officer who's doing an investigation, like, think of that first also? Like, maybe there's stores here with cameras and maybe we can find footage. And um, yeah, I guess. it wasn't until, like, someone in the mob brought it up that they were like, okay, yeah, we'll do that too. Is that something that the, 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 the uniformed police officers would do when they arrive, or is that something that a detective would... Like, they, okay, they'd take note of it, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't necessarily go in and watch it themselves. It would be the detective who's investigating that does that later. Maybe, but they're both on scene when yeah. the store owners show up and be like, here, for the bird store or whatever. Joe, Joe, Joe the funny thing is about the scene is, though, in the bird store, where they're... Or the bird store, the pet store. <laughs> well, they have birds. They said yeah. specifically bird shop or something. Maybe birds are a big thing, I don't know. But they, they go in and birds. they, you know, I got the impression they were only looking at this footage not to actually try and figure out what it, what had happened or who the culprit was. This was more about just proving to them that something did happen. Like it wasn't, because yeah. they didn't believe that they'd been kidnapped. They were like, oh, no, I mean, it's probably just this or that. Like everyone's jumping to conclusions. And I mean, as a mob, so again, there's, there's kind of a male justification for having, like, being sceptical and saying, okay, let's not jump to he's been kidnapped by, like, you know, the opposite side, Yeah, if you plus will. tensions are so high because yeah. of the three boys. So, yeah, that makes sense. But they, they look I mean, at this footage, yeah. I get it. I get it also, like, why they would want out of there, but it really did seem like they were like, this is a non-story. They were trying to find any evidence they could to to dismiss the case. Oh, absolutely. No, they were. They, they definitely were. And after this footage, they kind of changed their mind a little bit. They still want to get out of there and like take just take Hussein back to the station and deal with it there. But they do kind of change their tune a little bit because it looks kind of suspicious. Uh, the way the car kind of stops and then speeds off like after they, mm -hmm. you know, they've stopped for a little bit. Um, and there's other cameras as well because they get more footage later of different angles because there's like stores all around the, the street. Like they, they've all got cameras looking out. Uh, so they're able to piece together some stuff later. Um, and there's a whole conversation about trying to like discern like what type of people they are. Are, are they Arab? Are they Jew? Are they yeah. this? Are they that? Plus, uh, we also know that someone else was almost kidnapped the night before. Yes, and that felt like a sort of revenge thing, and it feels like this was their second attempt. Like, yeah. we're going to do it now. And I think as the audience, we kind of jumped to that ourselves, just, just because of how it's been presented <laughs> in the TV show. Um, and of course, the big thing that gets introduced at the end of the episode, which maybe gives it gives a reason for why other Arab characters may have done it. And I say characters because we're talking about that TV show. I know, obviously, 
a lot of stuff happened. Well, yeah, in a life, lot of them but... are, are based on real, on, but it says right in the beginning that yeah. some were made up for the so, purpose of dramatization. Yeah, and not knowing which characters are real and which ones are, I'm just going to refer to them all as characters and just look at it that way. Um, so, but we find out that that Muhammad is gay because and it, it lines up with the first episode because we saw him texting, and I think. I mean, maybe we, just, we we weren't paying attention to the name if the name was even on the screen or or whatever. But well, I think it's in Arab anyway. We wouldn't be yeah, able to we read have it. Seen, uh, so, but I think there's almost an assumption from us that oh, it's it's a girl, whatever, right? Yeah, um, there's like heart eyes and texting. Can't wait to see yeah. you. But once you start to hear people talk, because they start interviewing people who knew him, and they start like sort of painting this picture of him, and they say, oh no, he was gay, and we hear people talk about. Um, how his family might have even made it because even though from his family whenever we see him with his family we get no indication that anything was wrong or they knew about this in any way no which is a surprise when you get the twist at the end that he that he's gay because you would think in that kind of community that that would not be okay yeah or allowed uh, even yeah to say that because the because the, the the woman who is like a social service worker or someone like that that they're interviewing who he spoke to for advice at some point and she's the one that says, oh, he maybe felt threatened by his family, which, you know, everything we've seen doesn't imply that. That doesn't necessarily mean, maybe he did feel threatened in a way where he's not told them yet and he's worried about telling them and he's worried what the reaction might be if they do find out. But yeah. we, we've not seen any visual evidence, certainly, of action that would suggest that they were actually actively threatening to him. No, no. If anything, they were just concerned. I mean, they did buy him the plane ticket to go to Istanbul, yeah. like as part of a as a gift like we love you son here you could do the thing you want to do and it, it, it kind of like obviously i think the lead suspect is still the idea of this is retaliation for the the three boys but yeah but this does muddy it up it quite does, a bit it muddies it up and suggests oh what, what if an extreme arab in the other hand who found out he was gay uh chose mm -hmm. to do this instead and it, it does it's okay so now we have a plausible second motive essentially that it could right. be something because one of the things Which that's in this tense like tense environment yeah. between the two you think they're going to push for that because that will probably go over a lot better than retaliation yeah for what happened yeah from the perspective of the, the law enforcement and the government and stuff like that they'll want the peaceful more peaceful option yeah. and what's interesting about that though is as i was talking about this is that one of the things that simon says when he's talking to his boss when they're out at the the where they find the body and they're the, he's debating uh, like you know, this doesn't seem like a, a you know Jewish people did this because this isn't this this is not a, like we don't we're not familiar with Jewish people really committing crimes like this murders specifically like this. This, this yeah, feels a lot more tied extreme. up and burned alive from the sounds of it. Yeah, and he says no, I agree that this isn't that, but my gut tells me this is retaliation. Um, and part of his reason for that was that this wasn't hidden. This was put out on display in this particular place. It's a statement. And that's why he mm -hmm. was thinking it was this. But if it was an Arab killing because he was gay, then that would also be a statement, right? Like they'd also want to make a statement yeah. with this. So it kind of muddies up his reasoning for assuming that it was at least in part. Like maybe he's got more reasons we'll hear about next episode or whatever. But um, it does it muddies everything up completely. And I, I think what's interesting about that is that we we come out of this episode assuming it's one thing. Almost the entire episode kind of reinforces to us that it's probably this. And it's still quite tense and exciting in, in, in a thrilling way because of the, the build-up and the emotion and the can we find them yeah, in time. Yeah, it's really well shot and well acted. Like, I'm definitely in into this a, oh, a yeah. lot. But that last, it even kind of comes up casually at first. Like, mm. it, it's like a like a, some other news organization has brought up the LGBT part of it. And you're just like, wait, LGBT? Is he gay? Like, yeah, and, um, it, it's so casual. You're right because he's because he walks in the, the control room or whatever in the, the station. Um, I say because it looks like a TV control room, not a police station to me. But that's that's what it looks like. Um, yeah, it it does look like that. I I wonder if they're just connected. I I, I don't know. Like, or maybe they're just listening in on all television, just monitoring it. Yeah, maybe that's just part a bigger part of the job. Uh, there is um always monitoring the way the news are broadcasting things and because, because maybe because there is so much tension between the groups that they have to kind of keep an eye on it closely i don't know um yeah but yeah so it's, it's so casual but like everything before that is like see when see when we realize that he's dead and then the police know it's him they've confirmed that it's the same person 
um mm-hmm. and every time they're going to see his dad in the in, in the, the interview room like every <laughs> single time it just it feels kind of gut wrenching because he keeps asking have you found him have you found him do you is he okay can i see him because at one point he actually says that oh you found him can i see him like, he makes that assumption and it kind of hurts you like oh <laughs> like no yeah he doesn't actually know that his son is dead by the end of the episode does he um i don't think so because he's been in the station he's not been able to like see he probably has speculated yeah. it and other people seem to know about this this murder that's happened yeah well that's the thing so, on the in the you press think his mom's gonna find out before he does <laughs> well that's the thing in the press they specifically lie and say that they've not connected the, the body that's been found with the missing teenager we know it's the same person the police know it's the same person but the public don't now of course that doesn't mean they're not making a lot of assumptions and we see a lot of writing uh which was mixed with real footage to suggest yeah. that of course yeah people that are, was intense people are assuming this um and i'm like geez like you know it's, it's, it's a complete boiling point like people are just like that's it like you know yeah. and you know uh, muhammad's own brother is involved in it and he gets arrested uh, towards the end of the episode um uh, as his friends like hey that's the missing kid's brother you know leave him let him go let him go it doesn't work but that's what he's trying in vain yeah well at least we know that muhammad's name is kind of household at this point yeah yeah uh so I think what I loved about this episode and what it said to me about this whole 10 episode miniseries is that because the first one was such, a, as you say, like a prologue to learning about just the status of the country and, and the people in it and why the tensions feel like this. But it was a lot more scattershot because it was very widespread and introducing a lot of things. Well, yeah, we did have some complaints about yeah. like, okay, here's this location at yeah, this time. Right. Like, yeah. I'm not keeping up. <laughs> um, but this episode, I mean, it still did the location thing, but I just I wasn't paying attention to it anymore because... <laughs> no, no i know we really it. should start looking at maps <laughs> but um this episode was so focused thematically and from a story perspective where you know we didn't even mm-hmm. see any of the the jewish kid uh uh Avishai, his name is um we never saw any no, of i him. suspect he'll come back in a big way oh right absolutely again. and the, the rabbi we didn't see them it was focused entirely on uh, muhammad's family and the police investigation of his disappearance and finding the body all of it was focused and it was it told a singular story um from start to end it had a big mm-hmm. ending that it felt it feels like it's blowing up the uh the where the story's going next and i feel like the next episode will then be framed around another sort of chapter it feels really well chaptered in that sense for, from this episode right. uh, which i like a lot yeah i'm looking forward to what's coming up next mm. um we get to watch it soon <laughs> very soon yeah because we, we waited on this one um I, I was a fly buzzing around and it's really upsetting me uh, <laughs> so uh, the other thing we didn't talk about though is that the undercover uh like sort of radical jewish group the, the right. one the one guy that was undercover and his group they they get brought in for questioning immediately like simon orders it and he just they just kind of sing songs at them and it refuses to talk until one big scene where simon comes in himself to sit down with them and like says i'm going to tell you what's happened because I, I want you to know how serious this is and uh, explains that someone's been uh, mutilated and burned and it's, it was ritualistic and you know this kid's like claiming oh yeah I've, I, you know, I wish i had the balls to do that like like you know like i approve of whoever did this this is great and you know whatever and simon kind of shows some doubts like well yeah but you don't have the boss to do this you broke in after a month in prison yeah. and that's why you're working for us you're sniveling little that shit was a good line. yeah that wasn't the exact <laughs> line i was i'm adding a little bit of uh i'm embellishing it a little bit but like that it was, was pretty th- good though in the show it's like oh you're just yeah you're, you're just a little weasel Basically they call them yeah yeah you know <laughs> are you trying to avoid sparing you can wait to get out of prison <laughs> you, did any, you would have done anything You're yeah like, yeah yeah you're not some big believer of the cause and and that, that was the other thing as well um when the, when the police were arguing about who this could have been the idea that okay someone may get angry and like burn down a building or something like that um but jewish people don't tend to do like murders like this i mean this again this is just from his perspective like statement murders yeah, yeah. because this is life in prison and while they may get angry and want to make a statement they'll only do things that will be you know maybe a couple of years they don't want to throw their whole life away when they're when they're thinking right. like this but uh, then this guy's like well that's where you're wrong because there are those of us who, or that's our great advantage right now is that people doubt how strong we are yeah but that said that this or guy, that, how much we're capable of yeah but this guy's a fraud like so, so in the same scene it kind of says oh yeah some True. some of the some of you will claim it be this but clearly mm-hmm. you you turned out to be a chicken shit and obviously i say that just in the context of the way he thinks he's brave because obviously I, I don't think there's anything brave about anything he's claiming he wants to do but oh, yeah of course um so That's like so terrible i just it's really interesting setting up the kind of the 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 reasoning 
for everyone who's arguing why a certain type of person did this, all of their reasons are really kind of like shaping how they think. And Simon again feels like the guy in the middle who's like trying to like think things through and always kind of look at it a bit more rationally, even if mm. he doesn't like the answers that it's giving him. Yeah, I love all the um, all the scenes with him, also with Simon in the like around his coworkers and like trying to say no, that's a Jewish person. He walks like a Jewish person. Like, well, how do you know? Like, because do you know when someone is Arab when they walk? They're like, yeah, I could spot an Arab. Like, well, I could spot a Jewish person too. It's it's very like, I don't know, like wire walking <laughs> in this sensitive area that we don't usually like to talk about. But like, it's, uh, I thought it was a, it, it was still a, a great scene. Yeah, because he says Cause he's, it's just a culture that I just don't know. Yeah, because you know? he, he says he can just tell by the way they walk. It's, it's just the, the 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 way, and because because his boss is like, and how do Jewish people walk? It's like, yeah, it's like his boss is like ready to accuse him of racism, but like he says the same thing about Arabs. <laughs> yeah, so. he, he, he sort of proves his point that you can more usually tell. Not maybe not every time, maybe not a hundred percent of the time, um, but you can a lot of the time. And mm -hmm. he has got tells him that this is this is to Jewish people, um, and he may be wrong. We and we may find out that he's wrong. And, we might, yeah. yeah. Um, but it's 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 definitely interesting. Um, in in this climate where, like, they're they're really having to like dance around these things, and like you know everything feels so sensitive. If it feels like almost mm -hmm. anything could happen at any time, it'll just cause a, another riot. Like it just feels like anything could happen and even in, in like a social setting like this or not social it's a, it's a work setting but like in this like I, I, what i mean is a more closed off setting where it's more private um yeah everything's just like ready to explode yeah they're just <laughs> like you say they're walking on wires the entire time um and because i think his boss at one point says i've never felt the tension like this this is the worst it's ever felt and he was last episode yeah. kind of not admitting that things were getting out of hand with the the build-up before they discovered the death of the, the right, three boys simon was the one who's made the analogy with the balloon like yeah. this is going to pop and it's going to affect everybody but yeah. then again you could look at that and say well that is his racism because he's jewish and he had no problem with all this build-up and hope when it was the Jewish kids that were yeah. that were missing, but now that it's an Arab kid, he's like, oh, all of a sudden he's very, oh no, this this place safe and calm calm people down, you know. You can mm -hmm. look at that as bias. You can look at it as his prejudice, uh, I think, because he yeah. showed himself to act completely differently. And, and I mean, you could take him at his, his word where he's saying it's just bigger now because now it's retaliation and things could blow up even worse. But I think if you look at it cynically with a bit more judgment, you're like, eh, you're coming off looking a little bit like you're supposed to be impartial as a police officer. But as we clearly yeah, see right. in the but opening scene. We've, we've had so many examples of, yeah. in this show already where that's just not not the case at all. Clearly not. You know, Simon seems to be one of the, the few good cops, as it were, uh, at least in the, in the <laughs> show from what we've seen. Um, right. Because these two patrolmen that we see uh, have been, you know, <laughs> been anything but impartial every time we've, we've seen them interact with anyone so yeah. uh, no. do you know why we why they took his phone away hussein's um I, I i think i have to imagine it's, it's because he is naturally a suspect because he's the dad and they have to look through everything because even later on when he demands to be able to phone his wife like she says oh well, we'll, we'll give you a phone to use but we won't give you your phone back it's like i feel like his phone is just gone at least until they have combed through everything they want to yeah, that's probably true because he, they did start asking him questions like, "Were there any domestic like well, the word, skirmishes?" <laughs> the word was dispute, and then dispute, yeah. and then because he, he's like, "Dispute? What do you mean dispute?" And I thought, "Oh, they're asking if you've had a fight with them recently." And then they say, oh, "Has there been a fight with any family members, brothers, aunties, like neighbors, anything like that?" And he's like, "Oh no, 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 no." Um, but of course, given that, that, that there's been this this uh, idea raised that his family were mistreating them. Presumably, not only are they going to have to go through the horror of learning their son's dead next episode, they're also going to be questioned and treated like suspects uh, in a way that right. may even be more harsh than what they would have done if that hadn't been raised um, by the interviews. So I was waiting to see Hussein's reaction to his son being dead in such a way all, the whole episode. I was surprised that we didn't get it, but I'm kind of glad because it keeps that feeling of dread going. And I don't know yeah. if we will see it. it. It might just start the next time we see him if it's the next episode or the one after that or whatever depending on how they frame it yeah i think we will if he already just knows i would guess we will because i feel like it's, it's such a dramatic moment to take that i, I feel like 
I'd expect it. I mean, I won't be disappointed if they don't. If they have a good reason for it, because it'll make us feel something else instead, then sure. I, I trust them at this point after this episode to know how to play me like a fiddle. Yeah, so, this one was good. This um, was a, a really good episode. Yeah, the other moment that I really liked was when the boss from the fast food place calls uh, the friend, I think it is, uh, Muhammad's mm-hmm. friend, and yeah. says, uh, hey, I just wanted to... Because no, he's like, oh, I can't come in today because he's helping, he's looking in the forest because they've been tracking his phone as well. And, right, all of his groups of friends are, are like yeah. in the forest trying to find him. Yeah, and he uh, says, oh, I can't come in to work today uh, if that's what you're calling for. He's like, oh, no, 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 I just wanted to phone and make sure you were okay because I heard that there was you know a body found uh, and it came from your sort of area and i wanted to make sure you were you were okay and it was, it was kind of touchy because mm-hmm. it was clearly concerned about him and doesn't want anything bad to happen to him and then he says hey you should come back in next week we'll talk about we can talk about schedules um also bring your friend back who wanted to work here uh, what was his name and it's like because obviously during the course of this conversation as soon as he says there's been a body found that came from his area He's immediately, yeah. he immediately thinks, oh shit, that's... Well, he, I think he said he came from the, the, the forest, the one that they're in, that yeah. he was found in the forest. Yeah, and yeah, they're absolutely. already yeah. looking for Muhammad in the forest. Yeah, it was a great performance from the guy on, on the other side of the phone, his friend. Yeah, because he kind of chokes, like, and because he says what was his name, he kind of chokes a little bit and goes, yeah. Muhammad. There's, you know, it's, there's a moment there where he has, to, he has to kind of swallow for a second before he can say it, because he's just, he's so caught up in the emotion. You know his mind is just like racing right now, yeah. also. And I think that's what this episode is so good at, and why I think this is easily the best of the two episodes so far, is that this mm-hmm. entire episode made me feel the way that they're feeling where i feel like your mind is racing the entire time it, 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 it emulates that in the yeah in the story really really well done with how it's handled and how it's shot and everything uh, the other thing we didn't mention i think was the brother admitting he broke the, uh, the the machine the tool that we're using the big saw yeah um and his mother getting upset and slapping him but then like breaking down and crying immediately um because <laughs> she's just obviously she's just very high high strong everything's like I can't imagine what, what that feels like, that your son's missing and is probably dead. Like, Yeah. And she gets mad at him for, like, why are you telling me this now? And I think it's more like he needs to get this off his chest yeah. before he finds out that his brother's dead also. Yeah. Because um, she's with, like, all of her friends, uh, you know, all these other wives or whoever. And, uh, you know, one of them even suggests, like, her, she should have something to drink if she's feeling... Because they might be fasting. Uh and mm. you know someone else like, oh no, no don't be ridiculous like she'd be sinning like no like she can't do that yeah um and yeah so it's just it's just a really uh it's just all these little things where because that's what you would do like if, if, if we were in this situation right if someone we knew had, had was in this position we'd be like no you need to drink something because it's, it's not healthy for you to like not be eating and drinking right now. i know you don't feel like it because because when, when you feel that awful you don't want it your, your appetite is gone you don't you don't want any of anything you just don't um so you would say, no, you have to drink at least some water because there's no point in you getting unhealthy. That is like one of the things you say to someone who's going through something where someone's just died, you're, going through, you're not even like a murder, just like a normal grief process. It's like, no, you have to drink something. You have to eat something. Um, sure. And it's just this little slice of this culture where no, they can't just do that. Uh, yeah, it's a nice little reminder that, oh yeah, this is Ramadan. It's diff- yeah, yeah, it's different. It's a different world, you know, from what we're used right. to. Um, and that's interesting. So, um no, second episode, better than the first. And I like the first one, but the second one was... Yeah, great. Made me really, pumped. Really well done. Made me pumped for the rest. Uh, so, no. So we'll uh, we'll be back with episode three um, in a much more timely fashion. Um, and I did check the rest. The rest, the rest do air one per week, so we don't have to worry about them. Mm-hmm. You know, having to stack them again. Uh, but, yeah, so that is, uh, that is uh, our boys episode two. So let us know what you think of the episode in the comments below. Like and subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, there were some good comments in the first one uh, telling us about, yeah, confirming that some of the, the, the recordings were real. Like the, the phone message at the start mm-hmm. was the real phone message and things like that. Uh, those tidbits are great. Uh, so whenever we ask... Yeah, I really appreciate those comments. Yeah, whenever we ask questions like that, by all means, if you know what you're talking about, just, yeah, throw them in. Um, <laughs> please <laughs> it's interesting to read so yeah actually one one little a little slice of life thing that i i just this is a very tiny thing that i just noticed in the episode and i it just made me realize that i don't th- at one point when simon wakes up he writes down like the address that he's going to or whatever um i don't think i've ever seen anyone writing that language before like just a little quick doodle because you know yeah. I, i've seen it like i've seen it on like screen or i've seen it on paper before but uh, you know tons of times but i've never seen someone just quickly like scribble a, a note down in that language and i just like oh that's weird i've never seen that and i've always thought it was gorgeous i love the way the the lettering is uh 
Yeah, if I'm picking different to, you know, our alphabet uh, for lettering, I have to say Japanese looks quite nice as a <laughs> as a thing, as a language. You like the hiragana, katakana, and kanji? <laughs> yes, those words. I know what those mean, sure. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> yes, those words. Um, but the pictures. <laughs> yes, the pictures. So they're, they're, they're prettier. Um which I have to imagine is why it's much harder to learn those languages if you're used to English. Because at least like French and German use mostly the same alphabet. You can still kind of true, true. You know, write things down and whatnot. Yeah. But hey, I don't know. Anyway, so uh, yeah, let us know what you think of the episode. Uh, if you want to support the channel and everything we do here, head over to patreon.com slash TV where you can support us for as little as $1 per month and keep all the content coming. Keep us covering multiple shows and uh, me and Connor right now are doing Mindhunter Season 2 on Netflix. We're trying to do those one per day, so we're going through that as quickly as we can because it's a binge show and that's good for our, you know, schedules. <laughs> but it's, it's really good so far. Uh, really, really great. Uh, that that show son of sam right son of sam was in the second episode and much like season one of that show whenever they sit down f- for an interview with a serial killer it is phenomenal that is the, that is where the show excels um i should probably watch it you pretty sure it's, it's great um because that's and then watch your reviews and then watch our reviews because <laughs> uh, that, that that um and much like this i mean neither of us are super like versed in these because you know we're not people who have watched a lot of crime documentaries so it's like oh we've heard of some of these killers but don't really know much about them kind of thing set of Santa i've heard about yeah i'd heard that name before sure for sure um I, I didn't really know how he killed people though like i was actually surprised when i learned his dog oh, talked to him right he claimed his neighbor's dog t- told him to do things yes mm-hmm. but he admitted later that Was he made that, that up <laughs> you want me to do what <laughs> we'll talk about this later <laughs> um that was a good joke um so but uh, he, he admitted later he made all that up um and that's kind of incorporated at the show a little bit um but mm. uh, no it's, it's good those scenes are great uh, so if you want to go and uh, check out that show and hear me and Carl talk about it if you're on the audio podcast of course the Almost Cancelled TV reviews feed there's the, also the Almost Cancelled Netflix Originals reviews feed which has all the Netflix shows so go check out that um, you guys on Twitter at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates uh, but otherwise that is us so thank you once again for watching or listening and I believe we're going to check out the pilot for a new HBO show uh, the um, evangelical one with Diane McBride and John Goodman. Remember the title? <laughs> the Righteous Gemstones. The Righteous Gemstones. The Weird Tonight. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we're going to be looking at that um, and getting a review of that sometime up late Tuesday as well, I think. So, oh, we are? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think we're just in the first one though because it's a comedy. Comedies don't tend to... Unless it's like a comedy with like a proper drama plot, it tends not to have enough to talk about week to week. But hey, maybe maybe, maybe it'll surprise us. I don't know. But my, my expectation is to just do one and talk about if it's good or not. Um but we'll see but that's us so thank you once again for watching or listening we always appreciate it keep watching TV guys have you got any vanilla <laughs>